everything will raise. Okay. Everybody who would like to sign up is signed up tonight to speak, I'm assuming, which is good. So it is now 630 on the nose, and we're going to bring this meeting to order. If you uh, sign up to speak tonight, be sure and let me know, because uh, Sylvia, you're already on there. But, uh, yes, I saw it. Thank you. So it is now 6 p.m., 6.30 p.m., and I call this Castle Hills Special City Council meeting to order and determine whether a quorum is present. Has somebody called Douglas? Oh, there he is. He blended in with the wall. Okay, and our first order of business is the invocation by Mr. Pinkston. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're here tonight for this uh, budget meeting, and I just pray that uh, your mind and just wisdom would just uh, uh, just prevail in this meeting. Uh, God, help us to just uh, package this thing together, crunch the numbers in a way to uh, take care of our people, our city staff, and to uh, meet uh, the priorities that you put into the minds and hearts of our council and to look forward to a brighter future, a vision for the future for our city. And uh, I just pray that this budget would impact our city in a great way. Uh, give all of the council members and the staff who will be uh, reporting and speaking and engaging the process to just um, have uh, your mind for the best for our city. We love this place in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Mr. Pinkston. Tonight we're gonna have the pledge by Miss Laverne Jaffet. Thank you, Laverne. Okay. Citizens to be heard on non-agenda items. I didn't see anybody signed up on non-agenda items. Robbie Casey. Come on up. Hi, actually, I'm Robbie Casey, 144 Cassiel Drive. Hello, everybody. I'm here just to compliment our security and tell you the importance that we keep it. And we need to add to them to help them rather than to take away. So no matter what you do with your finances, it's the citizens that need to be protected. And it's our police department, our firemen, all of our help that's there for us every time we need it. So let's not consider any takeaway from our security as the citizen of Castle Hills. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Casey. Okay, under old business, we are going to conduct a public hearing on the proposed fiscal year 2019 budget. Uh, Let's go ahead and open that hearing, Mr. Rapley, and then you will, and Miss Laura will be, I suppose, answering questions. So it is now uh, 6.36. Mr. Rapley. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'll briefly go through a quick presentation before we open up to public hearing. Uh, what I wanted to do is obviously uh, recap a couple of things that we've talked about in the last uh, two workshops, which was in part of, um, you know, the overall theme of the budget, um, the maintaining of our city services and the possible dollars that could be reallocated uh, possibly to uh, different areas, uh, including, I heard council a number of times say, streets and drainage.
Thank you, Captain. On this slide here, uh, just kind of reiterating the point of the balanced budget that we submitted on, on August 8, 2018, the ending fund balance reserve uh, for at least six months operations, current tax rate maintained, balanced budget, which supports um, exceptional citywide services and this level to be sustained. At the time, uh, during one of our workshops, the city council proposed a two cent tax rate increases uh, revenue potentially of about 107,366. That's if adopted. Uh, possible use of those dollars, again, street maintenance, drainage improvements, capital improvements. As we talked in previous uh, workshops, reallocation uh, of funds, uh, this is in part a recommendation for reallocation of those funds in the general fund. Uh, total available uh, funds, 331,334, uh, recommending to transfer that do those dollars to the supplemental streets and drainage fund. This equates to 4.8% of the budget for reallocation. Uh, reallocation of funds have no impact on services related to public safety, police, fire, and dispatch. This slide is the table I showed last council meeting. We've uh, made some modifications to it, and I'll just run down the list. We have two vacant and funded positions that we are recommending for elimination. Uh, the project manager, uh, a position in streets. We also have excess fire department that's salary dollars that were in a previous budget, um, which was adopted and recommended by a previous city manager at the time. We are moving the uh, COLA from 3% down to 10%, uh, 2%, excuse me. Our health insurance re-rate came in. We had budgeted 20%. It came in about 1488, and then we had a couple of non-participating employees, which actually were uh, a savings to the budget itself uh, at 16,000. City hall improvements, uh, we originally programmed then 40,000 to the general fund for improvements to the building. Uh, we as staff and myself are recommending those to come out of the seed fund uh, moving forward to uh, start what we would call a, uh, a management, uh, building management repair type fund. Um, not necessarily fund, but a line item for dollars to be used for improvements for the, uh, not only interior, but exterior of the building uh, moving forward. We're also proposing to sell the uh, 1998 E1 truck and um, in talking to Chief Dover, we believe that we could probably, on the market, get uh, $35,000. The total surplus of the general fund being 346,334. Uh, as a result of uh, having new legal uh, services, uh, which was budgeted originally at 75,000, the last two years have averaged about 90,000, so we increased this line item budget to $90,000, plus as our new city attorneys, um, the increase per hour for their services versus our previous city attorney has increased. Uh, so th those are the reasons we actually propose 90,000 at this time. Uh, recommendation again, reallocation to supplemental street fund, 331,334. Again, 4.8% of the proposed budget available for reallocation. Uh, again, next step would be next Tuesday night Second public hearing on the budget. This is where we would adopt the budget and adopt the tax rate. Mayor, I'll open it up to public hearing on the budget. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Council, um, did you have any questions? We'll go through two rounds. Oh. Do we get to, uh, or do we open this up to the public? Oh, okay. All right. Anyone who would like to speak? You don't have to be signed up, I guess. So in case you are, George Booth, you're signed up to speak on an agenda item. Uh, that's number three, which is not a public hearing. But if anybody would like to speak during the public hearing, now's the time. Public hearing. Yes, ma'am. Sylvia Gonzalez, 103 Wickford Way, mayor, aldermen, and residents and employees. 
I'm very concerned about our streets and drainage. I know we had a tremendous amount of rain, and I know some people, can you hear me? Some people are having water still get into their garage or their homes, and we need to be considerate of that. I hope that we can maybe raise some money or cut back on some of the departments so that we can put more money into our fund for our streets and drainage. It's really bad in some of our areas. My house is fine, but I know a lot of people that are having major problems. I appreciate you listening to me, and I hope you'll consider it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. would like to remind everybody you don't have to be signed up for this item, so uh, if you would like to say, Bonnie. Thank you. Bonnie Hopke, 111 Amerson. I guess to follow up on Sylvia's, I'm sorry, to follow up on Sylvia's point, um, I think as I understood that the project manager position was to oversee the street program. Is that correct? It was. I mean, I, 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 my, my concern is if, I think we had issues in the past with someone not, sort of not being dedicated to overseeing what was happening, overseeing the contracts, overseeing the work that was being done. And if this is gonna be a push for the city, which it needs to be, I mean, I sat through last night's discussion when we talked about the drainage issues on Banyan, you know, Antler, West Avenue, and on and on and on through all the streets and all the discussions that we've been having for all the years that I've been here, which is not as long as most of you, but if we take away somebody who was going to, that that was gonna be their job, was to oversee and manage those contracts and make sure that the city was getting what it paid for, that seems a little bit short-sighted to me. I also wanted to say that I really appreciate Mr. Rapley, all of the department heads, um, that a budget came forth that provides for the services that the citizens, that I and my husband as citizens of this city do value. And I appreciate that. I appreciate all the work that you all put in every single day and that you, you know, and adding the budget process into this, um, into, into your work. So just a couple things to think about as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hopke. Anybody else? Okay. Last call. It is now 649 and we will end the public hearing. And we will go to item two, discussion on the city manager's proposed fiscal year 2019 budget. We will open the floor. Uh, George, Sylvia, and Frank Paul, you're still signed up on different items on this, so you will be called under item three. But this is discussion of item two, discussion of the city manager's proposed fiscal budget 2019. Mr. Rapley, do you want to say anything before? Uh, no, Mayor. Okay. Well, let's start on the left with Mr. McCormick. Mr. McCormick, did you have any comments or discussion on the items, please? I have, I always have a question, at least one. Uh, Mr. Rapley, you indicated that you're gonna turn back the 16,000 for the digital marquee at the city hall. Is that because the money is coming from someplace else other than the general fund or because we anticipate uh, that, that it will pay for itself? Um, Councilman McCormick, if you recall that originally that was submitted 
uh, at one point by Council Member Winger, uh, and we programmed it into the original proposed budget. And since then, during one of the workshops, um, essentially it was pulled because uh, Ms. Winger had mentioned it's no longer needed or in that capacity for having a digital marquee. So we took the dollars into surplus, thus that we didn't have to program it into the proposed budget. Do we know whether a digital marquee is still possible, if it'll be paying for itself because of advertising? It wasn't going to have advertising. I'm it was sorry. our understanding it was something we had to put in. I can't hear you. Um, I, I didn't pull it because it wasn't needed. I mean, one could say it wasn't needed. It, the reason that I recommended it in the first place was because I wanted to see if we could join with the um, company that does our digital signs to see if they would build one at no cost or more importantly if they could tell us how much we would be able to gain in advertising on it in the same way that Hollywood Park does. So I never intended for, for it to cost the city money but rather it, it could bring something in and could be built at no cost. So this is so still. We know that, which we haven't had a chance because Ms. Rapley hasn't set up the meetings yet. Until we know that, um, I didn't want it to be coming out of the bu general fund budget. I understand. So we're still anticipating a possibility of a digital yeah. marquee. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Scott, did you have any comments or anything? We'll go around a couple of times. I did. I just wanted to clarify that right now we have a completely balanced budget with all of our current positions that are filled, being covered with a 2% COLA, correct? We have a balanced budget as is. And the, uh, it's not up here, but the, the chart that I'm looking at that has the project manager, the street position, uh, digital marquee, all those things, that after our balanced budget, we are looking at right now having a 331,000, a little over $331,000 to decide exactly where we want to put it within our balanced budget. You are correct, Councilwoman. Okay, so I just want to be very clear. We have everything covered and we have a $330,000 surplus, so to say, or of money that we can allocate to place where we feel it needs to go. So we're not, we're not looking at being in a deficit, we're not. We're not looking at trying to find funds for anything other than like streets that need repair, drainage, that sort of thing. But we have $331,000 and change that as a council, we're gonna discuss tonight and then over the next meeting to decide exactly where to allocate those final funds within a fully balanced budget. Yes, Councilwoman. And as you recall, again, on August 8th, bringing a balanced budget like Mr. McCormick mentioned, the digital marquee, we had a number of things programmed in. Uh, we've gone through those over the last couple meetings, uh, removed, added it to a total surplus from that standpoint. You know, like last meeting we heard, let's just keep the fire, the radios for fire, because at the end of the day, two or three years from now, we don't want to have to pay for the entire replacement of them. So that's why we're planning accordingly to plug those dollars in right now. Um, and. I think originally one of the first things we had plugged in for like fire was, was the bunker gear, which we are able to absorb in the, the budget and maintain that for, for equipment for fire department. So after, again, the multiple meetings we had, this is what we've come to <coughs> for uh, essentially a recommendation for the reallocation of these dollars. Okay, so, so I just wanna make sure that, we're, that, that everyone is clear that we do have a balanced budget with, with the staffing that we have now with the, the funds we have now, and we have $331,000 to decide exactly how we're going to place that within our current budget and still be completely balanced with reserve and all. Okay, that's my, that's my only comment. I just want to clarify that we're just, basically the only thing we need to decide to do is where to put this $331,000. And, and that is the case, and again, I, I heard in hearing from council uh, over those workshops that the priority is streets and or drainage, so this is why the recommendation is to transfer to the supplemental streets and drainage fund uh, to continue to have dollars towards streets and drainage improvements. Okay. Um, that's all I have for right now, but I'm glad we're gonna make another round. Thank you. Ms. Uh, McLean. Um, so 
So if we're going to have discussion on the budget, I'm, I'm not inclined to take the project manager out. I agree with Ms. Hopke that if we're looking at huge drainage projects of 1.6 million, if we're looking at Antler, if we're looking at a CIP, and we have a history of having projects that have not come up to the level of standard of um, work product that we expect in our city, I think we would be foolish to not keep the project manager in our budget so that we can keep a mindful eye if we are really serious about engaging in a CIP plan with drainage and street projects going constantly. I also still, fr still feel strongly about um, leaving the excess salary in the fire department for a um, captain for Chief Dover and um, those are the, and I really don't think that we have al allocated enough for attorney's fees for next year. Um, we'd have roughly 80,000 that would go to our primary legal assistance, and that only leaves 10,000 for the extra stuff over a 12 month period, and historically we have um, a lot more than that in the last couple of years. So I really feel like that item is not realistic and we will end up in a crunch with that one. Ms. Winger? I understand, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Councilwoman, uh, you know, um, with the project manager itself, um, I think if we currently had a program, and I say capital improvements program, infrastructure plan, that involves multi-year planning, and we were underway with projects within those, I think it would be a viable position. But right now, there's no plan yet that council has approved for the next five years to manage these projects. And maybe once council is a consensus and come to a collective consensus on a plan moving forward, then maybe that position could be revisited. I, I, I'm sure it's a viable position if a plan is in place like that because you're, you're talking about managing contracts, managing mm -hmm. projects, and then going back over to make sure that on the side of the, that you're securing the side of the city and, and you're doing a quality insurance portion to make sure the project's done right. So at one point when we do have a plan in place that council agrees that we're going to do for the next five years. I think it's a viable position to have a management type of position for those projects. Um, down the road, they may be able to visit where we can look at maybe having uh, an engineer in-house in instead of uh, on demand, possibly. So those are the kind of things we need to look at um, moving forward after this budget as possibilities. Swinger? Yes, thank you, Mr. Rapley. Um, first of all, um, it's required by law that we have a balanced budget, so having a balanced budget is no big trick. The problem is that we've had monthly finance reports that continue to show overspending in every department. And what that means is that money has to be transferred from other sections, which could include streets and drainage, to cover those expenses, much of which involves overtime. What we cannot do is we cannot transfer money that's already allocated to personnel into something else during that year. So that's one of the reasons that a number of us are recommending cuts in that area. As far as the project manager is concerned, a number of people have pointed out, we have had way bigger projects in this city in the past um, specifically in 98 and 99, where we were redoing West Avenue, we redid Northwest Military, we rehabbed the city hall and we built the fire department, all without a project manager, all because the city manager at the time was able to oversee it. That is, in fact, the job of the city manager and we have a public works director who also should be engaged in that under the direction of the city manager. So what we keep doing and what people are upset about is that we just keep adding positions when there is no additional benefit. That's why that project manager was, was eliminated. I do agree with you that considering an in-house engineer, considering what we're spending on engineers is a good idea. Um, as far as the sale of the E1 truck, I'm not exactly sure how we reach that figure and you know maybe we'll get it and maybe we'll get less and maybe we'll get more but the thing is we don't really know what we're going to get right Chief Dover? Uh, 
by my best estimates, after looking at trucks similar to it, um, that's on the lower end and being somewhat conservative. Um, um, that that is. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, well, let's hope that's correct or that we do better. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Um, the other question that I have has to do with the COLA because we were originally told um, by our financial consultant that this is what Social Security was looking at. Well, in fact, it appears that Social Security may be looking at nothing or at most 1%. And since we've generally gone with what Social Security allocates, I think we may need to lower that even more to be in concert with them. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Winger. Mayor? Yes. Just one thing, Ms. Winger, again, on the financials we provide each month, I, I provided council a memo back in May or June, I believe, that explained, detailed the analysis of each line item. And we're not in a situation where we're over budget in line items. Last year, last night's financials, we were about 49% overall for our operating budget at seven months through. Now, if it says 80, 90, 100%, that's actually a good thing within a line item that we're not actually in that situation. Overall, as is indicated in the financials approved by council last night, we're in pretty good shape for this operating budget. Well, that's great, and I'm glad to hear if that's true, but as you know, I've been raising it in every meeting every time we get the finance report, and that's the first time that you know, you've know you countered that, so I sure would like to see the figures that indicate that's not the case. Thank you. Uh, I'll Mr. be happy to provide it to you. It was in last night's packet. Okay, great. Mr. What's his name? Gregory. Mr. Rampley, in the recommendation for reallocation, you have, of all these items, except the last one, uh, sale of the truck, they're items to spend. And if we're not spending it, that's a benefit. But here we're selling something and counting that as a benefit. How does that jive? It's increasing revenue. The, that revenue line was increased by 35. Because the okay. hope, the so hope overall, is that the, all right. So it's not a reallocation. It's the hope the say. sale is done as revenue in this operating budget. Okay, so it's not a, uh, it's a different type of budget item. It's not a, a elimination of something. It's an increase of something that was unexpected. Yes. Yes. It was yes. It was. A, okay. We increased revenue. The other items were uh, uh, expenses we removed. So total, yeah. Do, that's yes. Thank you. Now this thing with the project manager, <clears throat> I want to agree in part with Mr. Rapley as uh, what he feels we should have or have not a project manager. Uh, a history of the city can show that we have had a city manager in the past. Mr. Mike Shands, who acted as a project manager on many projects, and he was there was with excellent results. There were no complaints whatsoever from anybody. We've also had engineers as city managers, with mixed results. So uh, the head of public works should be considered to have this additional responsibility. Is something that he or she should override or see because the head of public works is out in the field all the time. These are just considerations. We can also hire a project manager as needed. Uh, last year, a former city uh, alderman uh, knew of somebody that he highly recommended for this type of thing. And uh, perhaps if we don't have a city manager who can do this, which I hope we we, I hope we find somebody who can do this that doesn't have the increased cost that we can perhaps go to an outside person and hire as needed. Um, the in-house engineer might also be a place to turn uh, for that pool to get somebody as needed uh, for each project. These are just my thoughts. But until we need the project engineer, at this moment, we need not have it in the budget. We can always amend the budget when it comes up as needed. Uh, 
Yes, Mr. Gregory, I, I'm, again, not opposed to some of those considerations. Um, I don't have a PE, so I would defer to someone that did, especially on those type of projects from that standpoint. So again, if we got a budget accordingly to, again, contract someone to help manage those projects, we can look at that aspect. Well, there are many ways to skin this cat, and so we'll hopefully find the right one for the time. Um, if any surplus we have anyway, uh, it seems to me we already have an ordinance that requires up to $400,000 of any surplus must go to street and drainage. Can't go anywhere else. So it, uh, anything above 400000 can be put in our purse or rainy day fund or anything like that. So it's a, it's a question of what do we do with the hopeful 400,000 plus? And I'm pretty sure we'll come to a, an equitable answer. One thing I, I wish, uh, you might in pass these out or have this as the back for people in the audience to see. This basically is the rundown of all the various funds we have, the audited results every year. And there's a very good thing here if you want to look for something very positive. We are always going to have a, a reasonably, not a lot, but a reasonable cash flow every year coming in for maintenance. We have a quarter of a million per street every year, come hell or high water. Pardon me. <laughs> we have digital billboards. We have all these other different things. Isn't that correct, Mr. Mayor? It is. Okay. So we're looking probably at a half a million dollars a year, approximately, possibly, uh, every year for street and drainage repair. But I think what we're trying to do is to somehow, I don't know whether we'll ever get ahead of the curve, but perhaps get ahead of the serious projects that are life and death projects. That if projects not done, the increased possibility of somebody injuring themselves or dying exists. And to me, that's drainage. Pure and simple drainage. And you, you've got to have drainage done a major priority, just in my view. As for the positions in the budget, I've, I still have one or two more things in my mind to settle through, uh, but I'm sure we'll come through with a reasonable budget in the end. Thank you. Before I get started, Ms. Winger, you had a comment you wanted to make. I, di I did. I, I just want to say not to take anything away from Mike Shands, who Douglas likes to you know, give a lot of credit to. We have had numerous large projects um, occurring in the city in the past, and as you, Mr. Mayor, have pointed out, we've had a lot of city managers here. Um, as has been pointed out to me by people who've lived here longer than I have, David Seifert oversaw a lot of projects in the city when he was city manager. Dave McLaughlin, who I moved here when he was oversaw the projects I just mentioned, and then Diane File oversaw most of the, you know, most recent um, street uh, projects. So we have had other city managers who have been willing and able to do that job. Thank you. Okay. And I believe I'm in that capacity to manage those. I'm just deferring, again, the engineering depth that is required by a PE. Yeah, I don't disagree with you on hiring an in-house engineer. Okay, the reason last year at the budget that actually proposed the project manager position was because we were having so many citizens complaints about the uh, quality of the uh, streets that were being put in and that there was not enough oversight. Um, we had been hiring project managers to come in, and I went through all of the receipts for the previous two years. We were paying over $200,000 a year for project management services through engineering firms, and it didn't seem like we were getting quality project management through these firms if we were having so many problems and citizen complaints that were coming in about brand new streets cracking, falling apart. Um, curbs not being installed properly or having to be changed, um, silt being put down, filling easements, that sort of thing. So it looked 
to me like we were getting inferior services for project management by hiring it out through some of our engineering firms. And when I pulled all of the receipts out of the records and realized we were paying hundreds of thousands of dollars a year for project management that didn't seem like we were getting, to bring it in-house made sense to me from a design point of view and a project point of view and a construction administration point of view. And that's why I suggested that we look at bringing that in-house. And so we'd get more bang for our buck and they would have skin in the game because they'd be working for the city and they would report directly to the city manager because our city manager is not an engineer and he's not a project manager. And that is a very specific position when it comes to construction administration, someone who goes out and knows specifically whether the construction is being done properly or not, particularly when it comes to streets and drainage. So on another point having to do with the drainage, which right now is an issue, and as Mr. Gregory has pointed out, is a extreme issue and it's a life safety issue, it makes sense that if we're not gonna do a project manager, that we go ahead and look at those funds or possibly the funds that are currently excess in the fire department and go ahead and bring on assistant chief to the fire department because while we have these drainage issues and while we have these high water rescues that are needed during all of these rain events where we have high water, makes more sense to invest right now in assistant chief of the fire department to go out and take care of these rescue situations. So to me, the money might be better spent there by shoring up our fire department, giving them that position that's required by our ordinance that we should have, an assistant chief, and protect our people until we get the drainage under control, have more safety built into our fire department who performs these high water rescues. So if we're gonna have them, which we are until we get our drainage under control, let's make sure we have enough people working with our fire department in positions and, tra and then do training to make sure that we do not have a fatality. So I definitely think some of this money should be looked at going into that assistant chief position. And I have to strongly disagree with Ms. Winter's comment about COLA. Um, I currently have up on my laptop my Federal Reserve and it's um, for Social Security this year. At the end of July 2018, the COLA is trending at 2.7% for Social Security and Federal Retirees. Um, tomorrow, Thursday, September 13th, um, they will release the new consumer price index and how it'll trend as of next month at the end of August. But at the end of July, it's trending at 2.7% COLA for um, Social Security and federal retirees. So um, I think her numbers might be a little bit off compared to what is out there when you research what Social Security is doing as of July. They'll have new numbers for August, like I said, posted tomorrow. Um, and then let's see. So that is, I had to say on that, I do not think dropping below 2% would be fair to our employees, particularly when Social Security is looking at 2.7 now. And if drainage and safety is an issue, which it is, then we need to shore up our fire department, make sure we have enough uh, manpower there to handle any of those rescues until we can get that drainage fixed. Thank you. I, uh, this guy, just on the COLA, again, I understand from looking at the, on the, the aspect that Ms. Minger brought up from the Social Security, and, and Laura had looked it up too, that uh, there was um, something she found in the article that said that 2% was a little closer. I've always, and I've checked with our, you know, my colleagues, and my contemporaries in other cities, being city managers to find out again, because they're going through the same process of putting the proposed budget together, just to make sure we're in line. Uh, and, and again, 2% seems to be the, the, the median there. Um, oh, I'm happy with 2%. I just don't think I, we need to go lower than 2% because compared to what we're seeing trending now, to go lower than 2% would not be what's happening um, nationally. Okay. Sure. Yeah. As somebody who received Social Security, uh, what I can tell you is that um, actually what we've been seeing in recent years has been a decrease in Social Security overall. Um, we provide health insurance here. As you pointed out, uh, we're going to have an increase and it's not as much as we thought it was and that's great news. Um, but what happens in Social Security and what happened last year, which was the first time there was an announced increase, which was a 2% increase, 
there was no increase because it was all taken up by the additional cost of the health insurance that's taken off what you received. So the point is, ultimately, there's no increase. And we're not taking that into account because we do provide health insurance. Okay, before I get started on this, I, I want to say a couple of things about the COLA thing. I, I don't know, uh, Douglas, jump in any time, where there hasn't been a time where we didn't give above a 2% COLA. Oh, yes. Huh? We did. When? When we had the Great Recession, we had all salaries were frozen. When was that? That was in 2009. And then in, back in 2010, I think we upped it to 1%. Okay. So 2009, we froze it. In 2003, there was a proposal to freeze all increases until because at the time I came on the budget that May, Mr. Shands handed me a note saying we were looking at a $900,000 deficit. And because of that, we froze everything until we got a better determination of how the years turned out. And it actually turned out we had a, something like a $25,000 surplus. So we had a look back if my memory is correct. But we have had zero for at least one year that I remember. One year. I think in the future you're probably seeing very low increases because you just don't have the ingredients of the inflation that we had in the 80s. We don't have that now. Well, I want to reiterate whether the cola stays the same or it doesn't, something that I said last night. And, you know, there's there's been rumor talk everything flying around we got to cut pay we got to cut services we got to cut uh employees which ultimately would be services uh we have to cut 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 and then all of a sudden we have a three hundred and thirty thousand dollars surplus that we're going to surplus that we're going to put towards streets and drainage well since i'm not going to run for election in 2019 I want to say you will not be able to nickel and dime this budget, this city, and our employees when what we need to do is pass a bond, a small bond. I've talked to uh, Douglas about it, who uh, probably knows more about drainage and streets than, than some, uh, and take small bites with this thing and not not get our city into a situation where, where we're uh, penny poor. And, um, you know, the COLA is what it is, whether it's 1%, 2%, 3%, whatever it is. But now I get to say something because I'm disappointed. And I'm very disappointed, and, and I'm sorry if, it's hit, if this hits anybody. But this Banyan project and our major flood areas need to be fixed. And I learned what a CIP was last night. Uh, they explained to me a capital improvement program. All those letters sound really good. Capital improvement, uh, an SH, I mean, a, uh, <laughs> a uh, one of those type of funds too. And it doesn't matter what the an acronyms are or anything like that. We know that we have problems in Banyan and we have problems in Manton. And I've invited Ms. Winger, we're going to Austin. And we're gonna to talk to TECQ, and I don't, I'm not sure why the engineer last night uh, wasn't sure whether it was against the law or not. I'm not even sure what engineer's purpose in life is. Okay, all I know is that we spent $160,000 on Antler, and here we are, and admittedly he says, well, you know, that's no good because it's over two years old. So I'm extremely disappointed in the Banyan thing. We've got a situation there that uh, nearly cost us a life this time. If you don't believe it, Dover, you can, you can show the film any time where the bridge nearly, where the car nearly went under the bridge and the guy didn't get out. Uh, that would be one, one. Um, the, I'm, a, I'm a disappointed in the project manager too because we're not living in uh, I understand Dave Seifert uh, was a great city manager. Uh, Mr. Shans, what can you say? 
these guys were, were fantastic guys. But before we go pinning labels on people that did anything, I want to notice all the, you know, this past time when we got kind of away from that and we put the hands in the city manager, and I'm not going to name who, but we, that nearly ended up in a lawsuit. We've got cracks down there in uh, Kermaria as big as the Grand Canyon. Uh, back when I had a motorcycle, it nearly threw me off. That would have cost the city a lot of money. So, I mean, we've got, to, we've got to act smart in what we do. And whether we hire an uh, engineer, which, like I said, I'm, I'm not sure what their purpose in life is, or we have an in-house, or we have a city manager, they've got to know what they're doing and uh, make sure that we don't have a quarter of an inch uh, asphalt base on East Castle in one, and 10 feet down the road, it's six inches deep if you pull a core sample. And uh, so all I've got to say is we've got, we've got problems. Uh, I saw Douglas's plan, and the only reason I'm able to talk about it is because it does feather with the budget. Um, I've never seen a plan like that in my life. That's a good plan. It's a good plan. It meshed in with thoughts from the past of our uh, street and drainage program when we uh, decided to concrete, uh, and you kind of took it a step further. I'm lucky in that I'm the mayor, and I get to see what the next step is. You don't necessarily get to see what the next, next step is because there isn't money there, and why talk about it if there isn't, but there is a next step. So I would hope that that we would, in closing, that we would bring all this together, look at this $330,000, and say, oh, well, you know, you can fix sunflower with that. Might be pretty good. Let's fix sunflower with $330,000 and uh, maybe dogwood, you know, or, or, or something like that. Or what we do is we take this and we use it, use it in ways that will, will help promote what we're trying to do and whether that be a project manager whether it be an assistant fire chief in order to uh dover you were short this time i know you were uh with with men out on the road putting those barriers up and then trying to keep the dumb dumb uh, bells from uh you know going in the ditch and when they did pulling them out and and all that kind of stuff johnny the same all i got to say is you know, it's going to take a bond and not nickel and diming our poor departments to death. I wouldn't work here. God knows why everybody else does. I wouldn't. So, how about that? Skip. Okay, I, I got a couple of points. Um, with regard to the Social Security issue, uh, yeah, it's true that, that the federal government has about a 2.7, going on 2.9, uh, COLA for Social Security. It's also true that the president on, the, on executive order apparently has frozen uh, the uh, compensation of federal civil service employees, at least that's what he's proposing to do. I guess it's a question of whether it will be legal or not. One of the things that we have to consider is the fact that over the past 11 years, the actual co uh, cost of living, the CPI, has gone up very little, zero to half, maybe three quarters of a percent in every year. And I took the trouble to find out what difference that made over those past 10 years, up to last year. And if you multiply that out and figure what the increase is, we've actually increased pay over the past 11 years by 22, 22 and, a, and a quarter percent, approximately, over the real inflation rate. In other words, everybody got a 22% pay raise over the past 11 years, everybody who works for the city of Castle Hills, because we paid every year up until last year, 3%, notwithstanding that, that CPI and Social Security were only going up 0 to 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.7% in each of those 11 years. 
that distorted our pay system to some extent. And so now when we, we look at something like a 2% pay raise, I don't, I don't expect that we're going to try to recover all that excess pay that we've paid over inflation. But on the other hand, I don't think there's a need to try to keep up penny for penny with the Joneses down the street with Social Security because we were ahead of them for the past 11 years as it is. Uh, as far as the project manager, yeah, we need a project manager. The thing that disappointed me the most about the Banyan project is that we looked at a piece of paper that said, well, it's going to cost us 800000 or 600 or whatever it was. It was a big figure to figure out what we need to do to be able to bid this son of a gun. And we won't be able to do that until sometime after the middle of next year. So their proposal wasn't even going to issue a bid until sometime next, next year, June or July maybe if they got around to it and i was just god awful disappointed with the whole idea that we have to wait that long to think about what we're actually going to do i thought that was uh, intolerable and it wasn't something that i would be willing to put up with from anybody who was going to do business with me now that being said i guess i'm hard-nosed but uh, that's the way I see it. I think that it's time to get to get somebody else involved, another engineering company, to put a little competition in the marketplace to see if we can get a decent price and a, and a decent timetable, a schedule that we can work with. And along that same line, we have talked uh, at, uh, among one or one or two of us about having a committee to develop a CIP. And I think that's essential to do before we do too much else. I think if we leave the money outside of the project manager's position, we have the option of using it for something else or putting it back into a project manager position when it becomes apparent that one is necessary in the next reasonably short period of time. And I think that's possible to do, and I think we can, we can still do that and have, have some flexibility along the way. I'm not really willing to jump in and have a project manager when my engineers outside, the outside engineers, are telling me it's going to take them almost a year to think about coming up with a bid. That doesn't make good sense to me. So that's just kind of where I'm at on that. Um, and as far as what the public wants, they want us to spend money on streets and drainage. That's what I've been told. That's what I've heard people say here in the in public hearing part of this evening's uh, festivities. So I'm inclined to think that we ought to spend that money on streets and drainage, however it is. I think at some point we're going to definitely need a project manager, no question about it. And I think if we can, that project manager ought to be in-house. But I think we have a little bit of flexibility and time to make a decision about that. Right, we probably need a bond at some point. And the only way we're going to know how much that bond is and when we need to issue it is to have a decent what do they call that thing, that CIP? What was that again? <laughs> Capital Improvements Plan. CIP. CIP, yeah, right, CIP. Uh, Capital Improvements Plan that we can look at and say, well, we've got these items that we want to do. We have so much money. We can get this done in this year and this done in next year. But if we borrow X amount of money, we, we can do it this way. And we have to figure out when we're borrowing that money just how in the world we're going to pay it back. So that's kind of where I'm at on that point. I don't guess I've really got any more questions for, uh, for Mr. Rampley, unless Mr. Rampley has anything for me. Uh, Mr. McCormick, you're kind of right on on a number of things that you've said. Uh, again, once we have an inventory of all the projects, we'll have a price tag to them. And that'll give us the dollar amounts that we need to look at which direction for funding options. If we don't have the capacity within our funds, then we may have to go the direction maybe they're borrowing or setting up a bond. Uh, once we do have that inventory and list of projects and totals, uh, I would probably recommend bringing in someone to uh, put together the financial plan to see, again, what our threshold is on borrowing uh, and or if the route is to set up a bond committee. Uh, typically, uh, the bond committee is set up by council members uh, and they select folks in the community. Uh, the, the bond committee prioritize those projects. They put them in categories like streets and drainage. And then again, that's how the propositions go on the ballot for voting. 
Well, I think it's been suggested that we, we should have a, a uh, capital improvements committee and that we should probably do that as soon as we can and then shortly after that we probably should look at a bond committee once we have some idea what the capital improvements plan is going to look like. That's kind of where I'm at. And thanks, Mr. Rapley. I really appreciate that. Next time I want to go fishing for compliments, I don't just want to turn. <laughs> thanks. You know, I talked to uh, uh, Councilman McCormick today, and, and one thing that was realized that I said, he didn't necessarily say it, but one thing that, that I said is, you know, we've, get, we've got to get past these political boundaries when we come to it. It's very important that we have a, a, a committee uh, a CIP committee, and uh, I asked him. I said, "Well, who, who should who should appoint that committee?" Well, the mayor should. No, wait a minute. Let's let council do it. Well, Douglas and I thought of something a while back when we when we went to deciding before we got in deep into uh, uh, the process on picking streets. What's it called? Starts with a C. Cartograph. And actually, although it's it's pretty simple, it's been going on since the beginning of time. And what that is, it's a lottery. And you know that way, what we do is we we decide by council and the mayor who will be on this committee and make sure that the names that go in the hat know what they're doing. And not, not to say that there's ever been anybody on a committee that didn't know what they were doing. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying, until we get past this political, <coughs> well, if, if I, I guarantee you that if I did a committee, everybody go, oh, look, the mayor, all of his boys are on that committee, or girls, excuse me, ladies, all the ladies in, are on, on that committee, and it's bipartisan. If Miss Winger or these, or Skip, oh, look, that's what's going on, and guess where we get? We get nowhere, is what we do. We fight for another two years, and then the other side wins the election, and then the other side will win the election next time, and here we are 52 years later still battling it out. So Douglas and I thought of a deal a while back, we talked about it, and that was put our entries into a hat of qualified people who could be on these committees, and we draw them. It isn't the first time that's happened. You see it on the news all the time. The same guy that put the prisoners in pink pajamas in the tents, if you remember that. <laughs> we don't have any prisoners to put in pink pajamas. But all I'm saying is until we get past that, we're not going to get anywhere. Well, you want to do the drawing or what? No, I disagree with having a committee of people. That's the point of having oh. a CIP and a project manager that manages it so it is completely out of the political realm. It's an employee that is employed by the city, that it's managed by the city manager, that we are in charge of that, and the council oversees, okay. and you've got people that have been hired to do this, and you take politics out of it. That has begun to be the problem with the streets and drainage. But you can't take politics out of it point if you Point of order, have, Mr. Mayor. Yes? I think we're off subject here. Off the, I don't think so. We're talking about the budget. We're, we're talking about the CIP and the project manager. But, okay, we're, we're off subject. So let's get back to the subject, which is the budget. Mr. Mayor. Yes. The purpose of a project manager is basically to oversee a, an existing project that has been agreed upon by the city council. No other purpose than that. So as I think we ought to make sure we know what we're talking about when we're talking about what a project manager is supposed to do. Going back to the budget, I've noticed uh, Mrs. Scott has brought up several times, it's clear violation of, of an ordinance that requires 20 people to be on the fire department. But Mrs. Scott, you voted for the 2018 budget, which had 19 people in the fire department. And I never heard you one time mention, mention this ordinance. I'm glad you brought it up, but I never heard it at all. We've had 19 in 2015, 2016, 2018 and now 2019. The other times we've had 
20 odd people. So uh, let's not get tripped up over the number of people. The same number of firefighters are there. We're not reducing it. A single firefighter, the same number of lieutenants are there. All the people you expect to be out there to fight a fire, they're still there. They haven't changed. The same number of captains hasn't changed. The, the same chief. The only variable has been whether we've needed an assistant chief. And for one, two, three, at least three, right. well, for quite a few years, we went without. And you voted for a budget with one year that was without. Um, I compliment the police department. Mark this down, Johnny. <laughs> that you drew from a pool of competent <coughs> people, namely your four sergeants, and from that pool you drew a lieutenant. Now, in many respects, that makes sense. You are not changing the strength of the force. You're not reducing it. You are actually adding experience to a position that you say is needed for whatever reason. And the cost is not in the overall $7 million budget. It's rather negligible. It's a $7,000 difference, but that's... A, a very reasonable way to look at it, uh, and I applaud you to doing that. Um, I haven't come to a conclusion on everything in the administrative branch, which has gone from six to nine employees since 2009, and Public Works is basically a, we've a general agreement on most things over there. So I don't see that there is an enormous amount of that we're not. You're not going to have any reduction of a service. Uh, it, it's a complete, deliberate misstatement to think, well, the city, we're just going to, you know, we're not going to be able to get the fireman to my fire. We're not going to be able to get the EMT operator out there. We're not going to be able to get the policeman to show up. That is a complete misrepresentation of the reality. That is absolutely false. There is nothing going to be changed. The policeman is still going to be there. The fireman is still going to be there. The EMT person is still going to be there. I think we're close to 95% agreement on most things, frankly. And this is the around, rounding off the edges. The reality is this. We have plenty of people in this city right now, more than enough, I think, more than enough people to get the cert get what the citizens want done. They want to be protected. They want to be served. We've got more than enough people to do that. I think we have maybe a few too many, but we're in the ballpark. We've got to concentrate. We know we need infrastructure repaired. We actually had <laughs> we actually had a survey of repairs. For example, of what it would cost to repair alleys. And in, when we had the last bond issue, they actually were proposing to fix my alley to the cost of over a half a million dollars for my alley, which is more than it would have cost to have done my street. And I looked at that and I said, isn't there any common sense going on here? Of course you're not going to do that. So. If I had to guess, I think it's a pretty accurate guess, I'd say we have about 8 to $10 million of drainage projects that have to be done. Not we want to do them, we hope to do them before I get to be a super senior, but they have to be done for safety's sake for the city. And I think they're probably about, and I think we, that's for drainage, for streets, I think we got to do a lot more in-house. We've talked about in-house. I think we ought to buy some of these machines that other, other cities have their own machines to repair their own streets. And uh, technology should make the machines a little easier to do than they were 25 years ago. I, we, I see no reason why we can't spend some money to do that. In the long run, I think we'd save a heck of a lot of money. 
Those are the goals we should be looking at. And that's where we should be marching forward. A lot of this is chipping away at the perimeter. And I think maybe because I'm the biggest person on the council, I get more chipping by certain people than others. But we've got to look at it that way if we want to be better off next year, five years, 10 years from now, and feel confident we're getting what we're paying for and to grow the pride of Castle Hills. This is a real gem of a city. It really is. Let's not muck it up. We have good services. We may have too many, but we may have some fluff. Get rid of the fluff. But we have fundamentally sound services. We have good people who work here. We may have a little too many. We may have a little too less. We'll figure that out. But don't make it as if the, the sky is falling if a few people who believe at this top point in time may not be necessary to achieve the goal of where the city wants to be. Um, it's much easier if we're working together than we're trying to sabotage everybody on everything that we don't agree on because they supposedly presented. And we've got all the things to do well here. We have the people, we have the employees, and there's not a soul on this council that doesn't want to be have a better Castle Hills. I think sometimes we miss that goal when we start attacking people personally. I really do. We miss the end result. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have, that's all uh, I'll be You preaching. opened the door, so I just hope that at the end of the day when we're doing this uh, you budget that you keep our, keep our uh, team in mind. And whether it's uh, maybe we could uh, shift some positions around if we have to, uh, or whatever it takes. But I, you know, I'm embarrassed when we're talking about uh, doing away with uh, some some people in our in our team members and, and not necessarily department heads that still have three hundred thirty thousand dollars left over. That bothers me. I have a lot of good services. We there isn't a, there isn't a city. A town in this city, small town like ours, that has some kind of pickup every day that I know of. Jump in, Douglas, if there is. Yeah. So every day, Rick's people are out there doing something. Whether it's uh, picking up trash, whether it's picking up recycling, whether it's picking up uh, brush, That's whether true. it's picking up... Uh, they're now in the business, I understand. I know, because you're hurting my business. Of, of going out there and uh, for, you know, Rick, Rick puts a dollar amount on some limbs or something like that that needs to be picked up and they, they go out and they uh, do that. So anyway, that, I think we've beat this up enough, but I uh, congratulate you, Mr. Rapley, on the, on the balanced mm -hmm. budget and I would hope that um, uh, when we get to the end of this that we don't have any end of rounds at the last minute to uh, to cut any uh, employees. Anybody else? Um, I appreciate Mr. Gregory not wanting to name names, but since he did name my name in his speech as he got started, I would like to state the fact that yes, I did vote for the budget last year without an assistant fire chief on it, but since it has been brought to my attention since then that it is in our ordinance, it had not been brought to my mm. attention at that point, Yes, I did vote for it. And had I been aware of it last budget season, I probably would have pushed for that position um, instead of the project manager, knowing that one is required by our code, our ordinance, and the project manager was not. So had I had it to do over again last year, I probably would have pushed for the one instead of the other. But because streets and drainage are such an issue and we were hearing so many citizens' complaints, that's where I was looking to save us money, more money to go towards the streets and drainage fixing by bringing that in-house rather than outsourcing it. So, um, thank you. Ms. Uh, McLean. All I gotta say is I hope that everyone, well, Mr. I would hope that everyone keeps in mind this small bond that we need and not nickel and diming our departments and uh, talking about getting rid of, of people to save uh, $330,000. It's uh, inevitable, but it's not going to get any better. By the time Leslie and I get finished with it in Austin, I don't know, they may come down and pave the whole city. 
just to get us out of the capital. I don't know if I'd want us two in there together. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Okay, let's move on. Uh, that was a discussion of the 2019 budget. And next we're going to talk about the submission of the Frank Paul, you actually actually were signed up. So come on up. I wouldn't want anybody to think I was giving you a special favor. I wouldn't want any special favor. Um, West Avenue, wait a minute, I'll wait till you come back, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> uh, Douglas, you made a comment about we shouldn't be attacking, shouldn't be attacking, and of course then you made a comment about Miss Scott. I can understand where this got lost in the maze. You tell us, have you been on council for 14 years? You didn't know that ordinance. I didn't know that ordinance on the four years because the city manager didn't bring it to us, whoever the city manager was. <clears throat> Had he brought it to us, we would have changed it or abide by it, one or the other. That's my opinion. Um, as you know, you and I voted together on the project manager situation. We voted against it. When you have, when you have a project of any kind, the engineers build in a fee for project manager. Now, the way we ran into problems with the streets that we did over two or three years because the engineer was allowed to be the project manager. And when you have a project manager who's the engineer and you have problems with the streets, whose fault is it, the engineers or the contractor? So that becomes a real issue. I think uh, I agree with uh, uh, Mr. McCormick that if we have a project, we ought to go ahead and enlist a contract person to handle that particular project and see what it's like, and then we can reduce the fees that are in the engineering that calls for a project manager. Now, Mr. Mayor, uh, Ms. Winger mentioned West Avenue and Northwest Military. Didn't the state pave West Avenue back in, when when we took it over in 99, yeah, uh, I think it was the state because they paved it and then they deeded it over to us. Northwest Military, of course, that's a state road anyway. So we would we have, would we have, would we have uh, uh, Hold on, let's, let's I don't know why we would have oversaw it. I, I can't disagree, I just question it because I don't know why we would do that. Um, about a year ago, before things got a little catawampus. <coughs> Our public works and three or four of the people who were on the committee, street committee, worked up a five-year plan. And that five-year plan, for some reason, didn't get taken care of, didn't get installed, didn't get action on. I think that we're sitting up here talking about things, including myself, that we're not that experienced on, and we have an extremely experienced person that we need to draw more information from. I'd like to address uh, another thing. You talk about the streets machines. It's not that easy. I know several people went to Chavano Park and watch that and watch how they do their streets. Chavano Park 12, 15 years ago had a, had a bond, just like the mayor saying, had a bond issue. And all Chavano Park is doing now is pulling a trailer behind the pickup and they're sealing to keep maintenance of the projects. It's, it's not a machine that's gonna do a mill and overlay or anything like that. We have two sets of, two kinds of streets in our city. Number one, you got the streets that have drainage problems. Until the drainage problems are fixed, until that street can be fixed drainage-wise, it's pretty tough. Let's take South Winston, that's a bad road. That's a bad street in front of Wayne Carter's house. Uh, so, but it wouldn't do any good to pave it. Well, you can do some milling overlays on some streets that don't have big drainage issues. And I think that, personally, I think if you put together 
uh, a committee like you all were kind of talking about. I think it should be a mayoral committee, and I think he ought to be chastised if he does not get engineers that know the business and to know how to take care of it and come up with projects. And I think they ought to be working with public works manager. Rick knows more about the streets, about everything in this city that has to do with infrastructure. And I just think that um, we, you could move ahead and get a lot of information that way. So uh, I agree that we are not have, a, we're not, I was not for hiring a public works, uh, assistant public works at the time. Um, our uh, public works director did not want one at the time. He felt the same way that I guess you and I do on that particular issue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Paul. I was the only person signed up for item number two. So we're going to move on to the next uh, item on the agenda, which is item number three. And that is discussion, submission of the Crime Control Prevention District CCPD adopted in 2019 budget to the City Council for review and schedule a public hearing. So that is an action item. Uh, we've actually, let's get a motion on the table and a second. We do have some people signed up for that. So and moved. So moved. A second? I'll second. Thank you, Ms. Scott and Ms. Uh, McLean. Okay, uh, there is some people signed up. Mr. McCormick, did you have anything to say? Okay. Sure, why not? Mr. Rapley, do you have a presentation or Mr. There isn't anybody signed up for the presentation, so were you prepared to do a presentation on the CCPD? Anyone over there in admin? So can I just sure. before we just make sure we passed out the two pages for the crime control? It, it has not changed from the original um, proposed city manager budget. There's no changes. The CP, CCPD approved the same uh, amounts and dollars. So there's actually no change from August 8th. So Was that prepared for the packet that went out or did that come up it's, here tonight? It, it's the same out of, it was all, it's, all I did was add a column that shows uh, projected ending. And it's the same document that's in your uh, uh, proposed budget document on from August 8th. Is everybody prepared enough to discuss that or do we need to give you a few minutes to visit? I mean, so to talk you about don't it really have to. I mean, the, this, this is submission. This is yeah. not for discussion. This right. is submission. Is just Mayor, to Mayor, just schedule. the point. You'll have to decide. Schedule a public hearing. You just have to schedule the public hearing. Mayor, your just next to make step. a point, again, it is a submitting of a budget. CCPD met on the 5th to approve the budget. Now it's in front of council. We're submitting it. Um, Chief Siemens submitting it as well. So there's nothing to talk about. We're just deciding on a date. No, and, and we needed to schedule the public. That we need to set a date and time so we can establish a public hearing so we can publish it oh, okay. because we need 10 days to publish it. Okay. So there's no uh, uh, presentation. Yeah, and again, it's not changed. And, okay, and by the time you. the CCP board uh, finished, I think on the 5th, we still needed 10 days so we couldn't get it on the 18th agenda. No problem. I'm sorry, Miss Scott threw me off, so it's her fault. Mayor, we could even do, I mean. It's a joke. If, if correct me, uh, Chief, that it can be done in 45 days, so you can bring it to the first meeting in October to approve the budget if you want, or you can establish a date after we approve the budget next week at some point, you can schedule a special city council meeting to um, approve the budget. It's up to council as an option. CCPD budget? Mm -hmm. Yes, CCPD. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. Sure. That we put um, the that we schedule the public hearing for the CCPD adopted budget for 2019 for our regularly scheduled city council meeting on October 9th. Okay, we have a motion for October 9th. Do I have a second on that, please? Mr. McCormick seconded it. Uh, since there's no, dis uh, I guess there could be discussion on that as far as the 9th is concerned. Anybody have a problem with that? I, I, I think I would suggest that we not do it during the ready, ready, regular city council meeting 
that it precede the city council meeting, just in case that the council requires a joint meeting with the Crime Control Prevention District if we... Uh, Would you like to... And I'd, I'd amend my motion to um, state that instead of being in conjunction with the CCP or the city council meeting, that it be prior to as a special city council meeting or don't however it needs to be, however it needs to be phrased, that we meet on the 9th and it's a special... Don't meeting. we have a meeting right after the uh, national night out? No. You can't schedule something if you're going to want to have a joint meeting. You can't do it all on the same date. So that's the point that Douglas was making. He is. Oh, he's saying before, but not on the same date. If it is done on the same date, it can be before. We have a meeting before that. On uh, We talked about it last night. What was it? Sure. It was right after the uh, national night out, and we scheduled it on the... Uh, Okay, so we have a meeting on the 4th uh, at 7.15. Uh, do you want to move that up to 6.30? Sure do. Okay. Mr. Rafferty, what is the latest date that the council has to approve the budget of the CCPD? 45 days before. We got plenty of time through no. early November. So it must uh, no later than the 45th day before the date of each uh, fiscal year begins, the governing body that created the district shall hold a public hearing. And only if the, um, the governing body rejects the budget, then you'll have to hold the joint hearing. So first, you just need to have that public hearing. Is there anything that says you cannot, if it's rejected, you cannot hold that joint meeting that day? Know that. You're not going to know that. I'm just well, saying, if it we... It doesn't if, prohibit if we that. It would be a scheduling issue. You'd schedule a tentative meeting. Or we could schedule it. it and then say it's not needed. Simply have well, it first there of all, just in case. We've never ever had a uh, <laughs> oh, we we've that never ever had anybody show up for a hearing on CCPD. <laughs> Second of all, that I know of, we've never not approved it. Okay. Okay. Where was I? Oh, I was in Italy. That's right. <laughs> I just want to see if you're awake. The action, the, the item on the agenda today is to schedule a public hearing um, only for this item and not necessarily for a, a joint meeting. So my well, motion we, was to schedule the meeting, the public hearing for Tuesday, October 9th. That was my motion. And I will second that. Okay. Could the mayor call this meeting at any time he wants to within, what is it, five days or whatever it is. Got to post it. 72 hours. Three days. Hours. If we want to front we, load this into we, a council meeting, we can. The idea, again, is that we have to publish 10 days out. So whatever date is decided, we have to publish it 10 days out before the public. Days, yeah. Yes. The budget for the CCPD has to be 10 days out. Publication for the hearing. The publication for the he the public hearing. Okay. So you, you, if you set the date in advance, then they can go ahead and publish for 10 days, and then the citizens can come and speak on the ma matter. Why don't we just do it in September? Well, we won't do it. Got to make sure we have enough days with the paper. Well, We've got to have a 10-day notice. Yeah, I don't know. So we'll be looking. Presumably, if you got it to the paper today, that'd be the 22nd. No. You don't have to. Yeah, but we have to have 10 days before that. I think October the 9th will probably work just fine. If, if it runs two to four and nobody shows up for the hearing, I don't expect it's going to take a lot of time. So why don't we just do it the night of the evaluation that we're doing, uh, Mr. Rapley? Because the court meets that day, and we don't know What's when What's wrong with that? 
Uh, yeah, but how long is it going to take to evaluate him? We're going to be all night. When was the last time the court was here till seven? Tina. Last time. Last week. Last court. What time? What? <laughs> what about before that? Was that a weird time? Was that a weird time? God bless you. Mr. Mayor, point of God order. God bless you, Bonnie. Point of order. We've got a motion and a second for, to schedule a public hearing on the 9th of October. Okay, and we've got a second. All in favor? Ninth. The ninth is a Tuesday. Tuesday regular, Tuesday, regular, regular council meeting. meeting next month. During the month. Uh, dur during, the during the meeting. During the meeting. Sure, we'll call a public hearing during the meeting on the ninth. No, she made a motion. And a second. And we just had a vote of four. All in favor? All opposed? Okay, four to one. It's on the ninth. Oh. We should have had our public speakers in there someplace, Mr. Mayor. I think we blew it. Okay. We can always uh, pull it, and then we can talk about it later. But there was also citizens to, to talk about that um, due to the fact that there was, all it was was a submission. I don't see there was anything to talk about. Is that correct, Paul? What would a citizen talk about? The date and re the review and scheduling a public hearing on the matter. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I would open it. I would, whatever my, the proper thing is I need to say to, to if there's a citizen that wants to talk about the scheduling of the public hearing, I would support that. Okay. She was the person that made the thing. Sylvia, you're signed up. No, it says submit. Well, I wish somebody would make up their mind because I was told it was just for submission and she wanted to have a presentation. There wasn't a presentation. They weren't ready for a presentation and so we were scheduling a public hearing which we talked about for 15 minutes and here we are. Sylvia, go ahead. Sylvia Gonzalez, 103 Wickford Way, Mayor and Alderman, employees and residents. Can you all hear me? Okay, I'm on the CCPD committee, and yes, we did vote for that budget. However, I think, uh, first of all, I do want to say that we have a wonderful police department here. Feel very safe and so happy we have good police here. Uh, we did look at the budget, uh, you know, that was offered, but w I, we didn't do as much research, I think, as we should have. Um, I did contact Bear County Police Department, I mean, uh, Sheriff's Office, and they uh, said that normally they don't change out their cars until they have a 100,000 miles, and they were, I think the uh, chief was recommending changing all of the cars, and some of them, you know, have, what, uh, 36 or less than 36 and maybe a little bit more. So we thought possibly we could go one more year without replacing all of the cars. And I know they do a fleet price. I have a relative that has a security company, and he bought 10 cars. And then later on, he bought one car, then two more, and he still got the fleet price. And this was a different year, you know, the following year when he did this. So it shouldn't be a problem. Um, I also contacted the police department, and the gentleman I spoke with told me they definitely do not change out the cars at 36,000 or even 40,000 miles. I just wonder also um, how they decide which cars to buy because um, there's 
a lot of information on the consumer report that provides, you know, cars that have a less maintenance, you know, and things of that nature. So I wanted to discuss that also. I thought that was important. We did vote on it, but I think it was premature. And uh, we just need to be smart about how we spend our money. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Um, George, go ahead. Mr. Mayor, Council, George Booth, 124 Dogwood. I too am on the CCPD board, which is Crime Control and Prevention District, for those who don't know. It's funded by the sales tax, one quarter of 1% is how the crime board gets their money. And we buy the uh, vehicles and equipment for the police department. It's not taken out of the general budget. Uh, I wanna reiterate what Sylvia said. I think it was a little premature that we voted. We had several new members on the board and so we were presented with the budget and we had to decide right then and there um, about the budget. And I think if we had more time, we could ask more questions. We didn't have the maintenance records for the vehicles. And so like she said, we have several vehicles that have low mileage. And those are highlighted. Units number one, two, three, and seven. The first three are Explorers. They have less than 36,000 miles and unit seven the Charger has uh, 41,413 miles. Most people on the board, in fact, I think I'm the only one that got a copy of this, so they didn't have information to really make sound decisions. Um, maintenance was an issue that Chief Siemens brought up, so I stopped by a uh, local uh, repair place and asked about it. And they told me that labor was $145 for uh, front and back brakes, and $120 for the uh, brake pads, which is a little bit more expensive than your personal vehicle, which naturally police vehicles are used a little bit more aggressively than our own. Uh, rotors cost about $220 from Ford for the original rotors. Aftermarket's about $120, and if you turn rotors, if any of y'all know about maintenance, you can uh, often save a rotor by turning them, and that costs $120 for all four. The issue is that if the vehicles aren't regularly maintained and inspected, you're gonna to have to replace rotors, which is naturally a lot more expensive. So my suggestion is that one, uh, I have requested uh, to see the maintenance records, but I haven't received that yet. I request that on Monday. And that you all at least review those records before you make your decision. Because I think these four vehicles, since they have so few miles in three years, are good not only for one year, but possibly two or three more years. Um, 36,000 miles, if you double that, it'll only be in the low 70s. And so I think that we get more use out of the Explorers since I believe it's just the sergeants that are using those. Also, I noticed that at the last zoning meeting I went to, it was videotaped. That wasn't the case for the crime board and I think it should be videotaped as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you, George. Mr. Rapley, can we uh, talk about videotaping the uh, CCPD board? Shouldn't be a big deal, should it? No, sir, and if based on schedule, I'd recommend that we had it in here. We have the capability, but if not, uh, like we did two weeks ago um, when there was a board meeting in here and meeting in the community room, that we had the ability to uh, video it. Okay. It's a great idea. It's not a problem. Okay. Who's the chairman of that board now? Robert Riley. Robert Riley, good, okay. All right. Well, uh, thank, thanks for not saying anything about the date, so we don't have to back up on that. The ninth. And we're going to work it into the uh, meeting somehow. Okay, we're going to move on to the fourth here item, which is announced the date and time of the meeting to vote on the 2019 fiscal year budget and 2008 tax rate, 18 tax rate. The government body will consider a vote on the Castle Hills 
fiscal year 2019 budget and the 2018 tax rate on this says September 18th, 2018 at 630. Ms. Winger made a so move. Is there, uh, have a second on that please? I don't think it's an action item. I think it's already been set. Okay. All right. It says announce. I'm sorry. Announce and set. Okay. okay. Mayor, you all will need to take action to, to set the matter. We don't have to? You will need to. That's what I thought. Then I'll second. So, Ms. Winger. Draw uh, the motion. Thank you, Ms. Winger, for reiterating that. Ms. Uh, McLean, are you seconding that item? Well, she just withdrew the motion. Why'd she withdraw it? Because uh, didn't you just say we had to vote on it? We do have to vote on it. Yeah, who writes this stuff? Yes, the government body needs to consider a vote to set it for I thought I action. thought the point was we had already voted on it. The, this date was already set previously. When do we vote on that? Um, we voted on it uh, in August. Yeah, we voted when we were given the date, then we changed the date from the 11th to the 12th for the first hearing. Does it hurt to announced. vote on it twice, and Paul? Then we voted for the 20th. No, I would recommend you do so. Okay. I don't, th yeah, okay, I don't well, think I'll it move. hurts to vote. We already have a, Ms. Winger, do you still want to reiterate that? Because it's not going to hurt to vote on it twice. What do you want me to reiterate? The motion? Mm -hmm. okay. So, so I, move, I move to approve the um, date of September 18th at 6.30 p.m. for the um, fiscal year budget and 2018 tax rate. Any second? Thanks. Douglas, all in favor? Thank you. It is unanimous. Okay, this is announcements by mayor and council members. We'll start on the right this time, Mr. Uh, Gregory. I have no announcements. Ms. Winger? No announcements. Ms. McGlynn? Please come out to the meeting next week on Tuesday the 18th for the public hearing and, and let your voice be heard regarding any, um, uh, regarding this, the budget. Ms. Uh, Scott? Ditto. Mr. McCormick? This is probably the single most important opportunity that the public has to come and express an opinion <laughs> to council that really makes a difference. This is the one time a year, if you're gonna come out at all, you should come out and let the council know exactly what your thoughts are about taxes, about spending, about whatever is important with regard to the budget. So please do plan on coming out next week. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCormick. The other thing I would like to say is don't forget about October 2nd. Uh, that is National Night Out. We're gonna have another record night our police and fire go around to each house and uh, this year I'm going to have a uh, little party in front of my house so uh, I'm gonna wait until you're gonna wait and see what the little surprise is there but I'm inviting all the restaurants uh, in town to actually come out and then I'll have some too and then uh, uh, there might be something something else there for everyone so I invite everybody to uh, participate in National Night Out, it is important. And with that said, uh, in our traditional way, Mr. McCormick. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay, second, thank you. All in favor? Thank you. <laughs>